So, welcome to lesson one of um, your evolution of, not even evolution of atmosphere, chemistry of the atmosphere um, unit of work. And as you see, lesson one is on the evolution of the atmosphere. So, in your booklet, whether it's a digital or paper copy, turn to page four, and you'll see some of the specification points we're going to be trying to cover today. Once you've done that, turn on to page five and pause the video and either just through your own research or whether it's just through your own knowledge can you have a go at the following knowledge check questions and then unpause the video and we'll go through the answers right hopefully you've had a go at these so please just mark them and correct them as you go green pen them as you need name the gas that compromises 79 percent of the atmosphere the answer to that is nitrogen name the gas that compromises about 21 percent of the atmosphere Oxygen, name a greenhouse gas. You can have lots of examples, but one of the main ones is carbon dioxide. Name a gas that causes acid rain. Common one for this is sulfur dioxide. State the process where plants make their own food. I've done that quite a lot during your GCSE science. You'd find that to be photosynthesis. Name the gas that causes lime water to form precipitates. That would be carbon dioxide. Name the gas that plants require for photosynthesis. That also would be carbon dioxide. And then name the gas required by living organisms for respiration. That would be oxygen. Good, so if you have a little look at the text below, now, if you wouldn't mind just having a little read of the first couple of lines here independently, by yourself, and have a little look at the annotations, the extra explanations that we're going to give you, and make sure you make a note of them in your own booklets or in your own revision notes. <coughs> so, as it says, for 200 million years, the proportions of different gases in the atmosphere have been the same as they are today. About four-fifths, approximately 80% are nitrogen. About one-fifths, approximately 20% is oxygen. And the small proportions of various other gases, including carbon dioxide, water vapor, and Nobel gases. So, a couple of key points I want you to make note of. The fact being that the probable percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is not as big as you might th think considering the amount of you talk about carbon dioxide in terms of GCSE science. It's about 0.037 or 0.04% of the atmosphere. The other things are very much then just trace amounts. And the Nobel gases, so these are elements in group 8 of the periodic tab table in gaseous form such as argon and xenon. So a couple of examples there. Right. What I'd like to do now is I'd like you to pause the video and as you'll see in the descriptions below, can you watch video one from the descriptions below and just on your notes page or just in your own revision notes, make some notes on the different phases of evolution of the Earth's atmosphere to what we have today. So what did it start as and then how did it change to become what it is today, which as you'll see is up here so if you want to pause the video and do that now then once we've done that we'll come back and carry on and look at the evolution of the earth's atmosphere in a bit more detail so pause the video watch video one now and make your own revision notes right hopefully you've unpaused the video and done that so let's have a look at the next little bits line 16 to 21 on page 5 and line 1 to 9 on page 6 <coughs> So, theories about what was in the Earth's early atmosphere and how the atmosphere was formed have changed and developed over time. Evidence for the early atmosphere is limited because of the time scale of 4.6 billion years, roughly the age of the Earth. That's what it's estimated to be at. So, we'll just make sure that's in there. Age of the Earth. One theory suggests that during the first billion years of the Earth's existence, there was intense volcanic activity, which released gases that formed the early atmosphere, along with water vapour that condensed to form the oceans. So, first thing to bear in mind here is a couple of key points. What are theories? Now, the word you come across 
quite a lot, but a simple way to describe it if you want sure is scientific ideas, okay? Now, these ideas have changed and evolved as science developed more technology and better technology to be able to gain more information. So that's why ideas about the atmosphere have changed over time. Now, let's do about volcanic activity, released gases. Some gases that released from volcanoes that are still around in the Earth's atmosphere today, things like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ammonia, and carbon monoxide, okay? Make sure you've made a note of those annotations, and don't forget, pause the video whenever you need to make note of those annotations yourself. Now, water vapor, so we know that to be gaseous water, condensed, so we know that's changing from a gas to a liquid, to form the oceans. Now, it's important to bear in mind that gases such as carbon dioxide get trapped in the oceans, and that is often what an idea, we'll refer to a little later, is one of the mechanisms of carbon capture. The Earth's atmosphere may have been like the atmosphere of Mars and Venus today. So just from a reference point, Mars and Venus have high concentrations of carbon dioxide in their atmosphere, about 95 to 98%. So what we're talking about is the Earth's atmosphere historically being like that. Now, volcanoes also produced nitrogen, which gradually built up in the atmosphere, and there may have been small proportions of methane and ammonia. Don't forget that nitrogen is about 80% of the Earth's atmosphere today. And methane and ammonia, you might see examples, diagrams like this. So this is an example of a methane molecule. Hopefully you've seen these kind of dot and cross diagrams. And because Carbon and hydrogen are both non-metals. They're held together by covalent bonds. So the electrons in the outer shells of carbon and hydrogen are being shared so that each atom gets a full outer shell. So they're examples of covalent molecules. So make sure you've made a little note of this example diagram. If we carry on. So when the oceans form, carbon dioxide dissolved in the water and carbonates were precipitated, producing insoluble sediments, reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, what we have, when the oceans form, carbon dioxide dissolved. So carbon dioxide was the solute being dissolved in a solvent to form solution. And carbonates were formed. So precipitate is another word for formed. And these were rocks that don't dissolve, rocks and substances that don't dissolve in water. So things like shells and skeletons, and these are often made out of limestone, or the scientific name for this is calcium carbonate. So that's an example of a carbonate that was formed. Right. <coughs> Moving on. Algae and plants produced the and the oxygen that's now in the atmosphere by photosynthesis, which can be represented in the equation below. So hopefully you know this, and don't forget that the equation has to be balanced with 6, 6, and 6 in front of each of these. And glucose is C6H12O6. Now, algae is just a generic term for plants that grow underwater and within water. And photosynthesis, obviously don't forget, occurs within chloroplasts, and it absorbs light energy from the sun in order to try and ge generate energy for the plant. Now, algae first produced oxygen about 2.7 billion years, and soon after this, oxygen appeared in the atmosphere. Over the next billion years, plants evolved, and the percentage of oxygen gradually increased to a level that enabled animals to evolve. Now, don't forget, evolution, so gradual change over time, occurs as a result of natural selection. And... Animals were able to evolve because obviously there's more oxygen, which meant that um, animals could carry out more respiration and they could do it at a greater complex level, which means they could become and evolve into more complex organisms. Right, good. Now, last little bits on this. So, now if you want to pause the video, have a look at video two in the description. And just if you want to make any of your own revision notes on 
the ideas of carbon capture that are going to come up. So, pause the video now, watch video two, and then we'll come back to and expand on this text in a minute. Right, hopefully you've watched video two, and so you're back on this and unpaused, so if we go through this. Algae and plants decrease the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by photosynthesis. So don't forget, that's because carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants, but also, it also means that oxygen increased as a result, because oxygen is given out. Important to make a note of that, and don't forget that. Carbon dioxide was also decreased by the formation of sedimentary rocks and fossil fuels that contain carbon. Now, sedimentary rocks are rocks that are made up of squashed and compressed sediments, small rocks that are squashed down with lots of pressure to form larger, more solid rocks. So limestone is an example of a sedimentary rock, made of calcium carbonate, formed from shells and skeletons of marine organisms that died. Coal is a sedimentary rock, formed from thick plant deposits that were buried and compressed over millions of years. Now, the reason why you get coal out of dead plants is that plants are obviously full of carbon, and so they die, and over time they build up into layers and layers in the earth, and high levels of heat and pressure are applied to these remains that then chemically alter them from dead organic matter remains into fossil fuels such as coal. The remains of plankton, so plankton, microscopic sea organisms, think about things that like whales eat for example, were deposited in muds on the seafloor and were covered over and compressed over millions of years producing crude oil and natural gas that became trapped in the rocks. These processes are the Earth's natural way of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So, we call that carbon capture. And don't forget, crude oil, coal, natural gas, the energy that's stored up within them can be released by combustion, i.e. burning these idea, burning these fuels in oxygen. Good. Right. Don't need to worry about that next little bit. We're just going to move straight on to our next activity. So, on page seven you will see the following. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like to pause the video and simply have a go at filling in the gaps with any keywords that you can work out from the work we've done and the videos we've watched so far. Once you've done that, you can unpause the video and we will go through and just fill in the gaps and make sure they're correct. Right, so hopefully you've done that and hopefully you've had a go. So if we just go through these nice and quickly, correct them or mark them, um, Right, if you've got them right, correct them if you haven't got them right, so you've got full record by the end of it. So, the Earth is approximately 4.6 billion years. Now, volcanoes release gases into the atmosphere. Water vapor cooled the Earth and formed the oceans. The main gas found in the atmosphere at this time was... dioxide. Now, volcanoes released other gases such as nitrogen, methane, and ammonia. The oceans dissolved carbon dioxide which turned carbon dioxide which turned into calcium carbonate and formed limestone. Algae and plants use carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to make glucose in a process called photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide levels reduced due to four main reasons. Captured carbon in sedimentary rocks. Marine animals are forming Fossils, plant material forming coal, and plankton on the sea floor being turned into crude oil. Excellent. So hopefully you've got answers filled in for that. And if we move on. Now, explain 
how and why the percent of oxygen in the atmosphere changed from 2.7 billion years ago to the present include a balanced symbol equation in your answer six marks so if you'd like to pause the video now and simply have a go at this question and i'll go through it in a couple of minutes once you've unpaused the video so explain how the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere changed from 2.7 billion years ago to the present include a balanced symbol equation so got to bear in mind the first thing you get a mark for is that there was little oxygen in the atmosphere 2.7 billion years ago now you then had algae and plants that evolved these carried out photosynthesis and now if we're looking for our balanced symbol equation we'd need to know that photosynthesis is 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O gives you C6H12O6 plus 6O2 and then Got to bear in mind if you over time got more plants and algae, what that led to was more oxygen in the atmosphere. Good. Good. So those big things you'd be getting marks for on that question. Right. We just oh, zoom out a little too much there. Finish with having a look at the knowledge and application questions below. Pause the video, have a go at these, and then simply unpause the video and we'll mark them to finish off. Right, so hopefully you've had a go. So let's go through these nice and quickly. Percentage of nitrogen in the atmosphere today, you're looking at around 79 to 80%. For oxygen, you're looking at around 21 carbon dioxide, remember that figure, 0.037. Gas produced by volcanoes, lots of them, but remember one of the key ones could be sulfur dioxide. Name the process where plants make glucose, photosynthesis. State the gas produced by algae. Algae is a plant that produces a gas, would be oxygen. Chemical formula for calcium carbonate is in the text, it's CaCO3. Coal is a sedimentary rock formed from thick plant deposits. Then describe the effect on our atmosphere of planting more trees. You'd have an increase in oxygen concentration and a decrease in CO2 concentration. Describe the effect of burning fossil fuels on the atmosphere. Fossil fuels contain lots of carbon. If you burn them, you release the carbon that bonds with oxygen in the air to form carbon dioxide. So you'd have an increase in the CO2 concentration. Good. And that is your first lesson on